Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening to everybody. Uh, let me first uh, say that I am so much pleased to be with you here today. And I am really ecstatic that uh, this is happening. Um, as Kamran mentioned, we have started this year almost four years ago. And in all of my uh, webinars and actual seminars and global meetings, uh, I've never had a one dedicated uh, to discuss with Muslims uh, on the Islamic approach and role uh, in the area of environmental protection. So this comes uh, a very uh, good delight uh, to myself. Um, you know, the uh, we are uh, Muslims are uh, almost one fifth of the global population. Um, and uh, the Quran and the Sunnah, the Hadith, uh, and uh, the 1400 years of uh, leading the world have provided excellent examples. Yeah, can you bring my black one? Sorry? Hello? Can you hear me? Should I continue? Yes, please continue. All right. So uh, I was saying that uh, Muslims have over the centuries uh, provided uh, good examples and practices on uh, living in harmony with nature, whether that is in the sacred script of the Holy Quran or the Hadith or the practices of the Prophet and, and, and the entire uh, Islamic civilization. But over the past 200, 300 years, unfortunately, we have not been in the forefront. And especially now, uh, when we are facing tremendous and uh, a mixture of crises, the crisis of climate change, as everybody knows about it, the crisis of the pandemics, which are actually uh, part of the crisis of ecosystem destru destruction, the crisis of pollution, the crisis of waste, uh, and of course, all the associated crises, uh, including poverty and, and what have you. Um, so what, what you're doing today is actually a very important step forward. I know, um, of course, we cannot underestimate the uh, excellent uh, work that has been done by a number of uh, Muslim scholars. Uh, we have Dr. Fazlun Khalid, who I consider the guru of Islamic uh, ecology, uh, and, and of course, many others that we have started working with. Um, but however, in a, uh, at the global level, um, faith-based organizations uh, over the centuries have been providing support, uh, socioeconomic support to communities. Um, and they have an outreach that is unprecedented and unmatched anywhere. Even the United oh. Nations system uh, cannot uh, match the outreach uh, of uh, faith uh, uh, leaders at different levels. Especially, you would find a faith leader in every corner of the world, whether it is an imam or a priest or a rabbi or a monk or what have you. So this power of outreach is very important to harness and to work with. In addition, if I uh, may say so, um, the, the economic power of faith-based organizations. And some of you might know that the faith-based organizations are the fourth largest economic power on earth. If you look at the institutions or the faith institutions and how much money they own and they invest, uh, that is tremendous. And I was giving a webinar the other day to uh, the African region, and I mentioned that um, if you put the economy of faith-based organizations together, it is more than the economy of the entire African continent. And if you put the size of, uh, the area size of land uh, that is owned by faith-based organizations, it is bigger than uh, Mexico and Australia put together. So it's a humongous power that uh, is under the control of faith leaders and faith communities. However, 
the most important part of all of this is what basic principles and values uh, religions uphold. And um, if when we go to a Friday prayer, for example, when we listen to an imam, we listen with our hearts and not only with, with our minds. And that the, the speech from God, from God's uh, uh, words gets really uh, into our uh, behavior and, and we believe in it and we go and we practice and, and so on. So it is more important to have a faith leader talk to the communities, the, the ordinary people, and even to the policymakers than a scientist or a, an international diplomat talking about anything else. And the diplomat would be debated and would be questioned but an imam, if, we, if the imam speaks with the power of the Holy Quran, no one would debate uh, their discussions. So measure this on the other religions. You have 1.8 billion Muslims, 2.2 billion Christians, and 100 million uh, or 1 billion Buddhists, and so on. It's, it's humongous. So uh, we are working with those international, those local, regional organizations that are uh, led by their spiritual beliefs to mobilize their power and their religion to uh, provide the set of standards that enhance or, or controls or uh, impacts the behavior of the people. And you were talking about uh, the Islamic uh, guidelines on uh, uh, sustainable living. This is a wonderful news because religions in general, they do uh, state or control what to dress, what to eat, what to drink, how to uh, walk gently on earth and so on and so forth. So you can find dealing with water issues, dealing with the plastics, dealing with the soil, dealing with uh, waste and so on, you would find substantive uh, support uh, that is that present uh, that is present in the uh, Holy Quran or the other um, spiritual scripts that we believe in. So, from that perspective, uh, the United Nations uh, um, wanted to institutionalize uh, this um, role of faith institutions, and this is why we came with uh, the Faith for Earth uh, initiative, which was. Uh, created or founded in 2017 with the with three goals the first goal is to work with faith leaders at all levels to enhance their contribution the second level uh, the second goal is to uh, uh, harness the uh, economic power of these organizations to green them because as was mentioned by um, the imam is that uh, we need to divest from not only fossil fuel, but any investment that is in, uh, environmentally harmful. And the third is to bridge the uh, understanding between uh, the spiritual scripts and holy scripts and what the science is saying. Um, especially, you know, the, the issues uh, around climate change, around uh, waste, around pollution, and so on. The science has the facts, the evidence, and so on. But the scripts have the moral responsibility towards, you know, uh, beating uh, pollution or fighting climate change and so on. So uh, this is the, the initiative. And, and, and we have, uh, since then, we have been engaging with all sorts of uh, organizations, uh, whether faith specific or interfaith organizations, um, to mobilize the international community to contribute to environmental sustainability. The latest uh, engagement we have had was last October on the 5th to 8th of October, where we had more than uh, 450 um, leaders, faith leaders from 15 uh, religions uh, from 60 countries uh, speaking out uh, about the spiritual and uh, values or the ethics of uh, 
conserving our nature and living in harmony with nature. And we have uh, all come up with a commitment that is called the uh, Our Sacred Commitment, and it is uh, now available in different languages on our website, so anybody can uh, refer to it. Now, the, the next steps for us, we want to take this to the next level. And we are establishing the Faith for Earth Coalition. And we want to bring all the wise men and women of this world uh, from a uh, faith perspective to come together on an, a frequent basis and to send to the people coherent, unified messages that we are all in this together. And we have all a responsibility because we, are, we live on one earth, we breathe one uh, air, we eat from the same food, we drink the same water and so on. Um, but bringing the, the, the uh, wisdom of the eminent faith leaders would need the energy, the enthusiasm, the innovation, and the leadership of the young people. So a second uh, pillar of the uh, coalition would be a young faith leaders uh, council. A third uh, pillar would be a science uh, scholars consortium where we uh, facilitate the dialogue, the policy dialogue between scientists and uh, scholars or uh, theologians or religious leaders and, and so on. And the fourth one is uh, a network of CEOs of faith-based organizations uh, um, building on their power of reach, their power of uh, being able to actually uh, work uh, on the ground in projects supporting the socio-economic development of the people around the globe. So we want to bring them all together on environmental issues because that has not been uh, the case so far. So uh, I'm very happy that we're doing it and I'm of course uh, I'm uh, delighted that we have Dr. Fazlun, we have uh, Kamran, and we have uh, nine more Islamic uh, scholars joining us in coming up with a charter, with an Islamic charter on in the environment. Probably you have heard uh, about Pope Francis and his leadership on environmental issues in what is called Laudato Si, uh, praise to be, um, which is a very comprehensive letter from the Catholic perspective on environmental issues. They are identifying the environmental issues, but also providing solutions from their perspective. And I believe it is also uh, very important for Muslims, uh, being 1.6 or 1.8 billion Muslims, to have that perspective, not only for Muslims alone to guide our living and our way in, in life, but also as uh, solutions to environmental issues facing the entire uh, global human um, race. And uh, so this is in the making and hopefully in, uh, in 2021, we will celebrate uh, the um, launch of such an environmental uh, charter. Um, on the issue that I just want to reply, and I'm sorry I've taken more than my time, uh, on the urgency of the issue. Uh, indeed, it is urgent from all perspectives, and the science is telling us that it is urgent. And if you refer to what we call the IPCC report, the Interpanel on Climate Change report, you will find answers that in eight to 10 years, we will get to a uh, degree increase in the temperature of Earth, 1.5 and exceed it. And that has tremendous impact on life on Earth. For example, 90% of coral reefs will disappear. Uh, sea rise, um, uh, dry lands, and, and so on and so forth. And that is happening now, but in 10 years, it will be, I think, the point of no return. So it is very in, in, uh, urgent, and we all need to put our hands together to uh, face this uh, uh, you know, unprecedented situation that we're living in. Thank you very much.